Welcome back to Camp Witch Doctor. It's finally time to start building our robot. Let's get started by connecting the drive. This is going to be chapter three on your Camp Witch Doctor build book. You're going to need your chassis. Obviously, yours might look different than this if you didn't pick Slugger. I'm building Slugger today. You're going to need feed controllers and your motors, so make sure to find those. You're also going to need your Phillips head screwdriver that looks like this, along with your two drive clamps and four of your screws. So once you have everything picked out in your kit, we can go ahead and get started. We're gonna start by placing a motor on each drive clamp. The drive clamps are these little slots here. You can see it's kind of shaped like the motor. And you're gonna place your motor in there with the sticker facing up. So you'll see it just sits right in there. So the speed controllers are actually going to control the speed. I know, mind blowing that that's what they would do. Now, obviously, when you're driving your robot, you probably don't want it to go full speed every time you hit the stick. Can you imagine if the 250 pound robots didn't have a slower setting, they would just zoom across the box and crash it to the other side. It would be pretty, pretty chaotic. So that's what the speed controller does. It's going to talk to our controller, our receiver and transmitter, which we'll talk about a little later, and it's going to modulate the speed of the motors. So go ahead and find them. They're the, yeah, they look like circuit boards because they actually do quite a bit of uh, thinking for you and you can go ahead and take them out. You'll see there's two speed controllers here, one for each motor. We're gonna start by connecting the drive side of the speed controllers. You'll notice that there's a blue wire and a purple wire. If you follow those back to your speed controller, you'll see that they're actually labeled M1 and M2 on the speed controller. That stands for motor one and motor two. You'll see that the purple and blue wire are actually joined all throughout their length, except for a little tip here. You can pull them apart a little bit further, just like this. It's pretty easy to do. That way you have a little more uh, wire to work with. It's a little bit easier to plug them in. If you take a look at the end of your wires, you'll see these little connectors. Now these connectors are great because it lets you plug your speed controllers right into your motors without having to solder. Soldering is a more advanced process that a lot of robot builders choose because it's a little bit more robust, but it's definitely more of an advanced skill. These should work great for your first build. One side has a little slit down the middle, and the other side, it's just a solid face. Now, before we connect the motor, let's take a closer look at your chassis. You'll see that there is an L and an R right here. That stands for left and right. This is important because we're actually gonna wire your left and your right motors a little differently. So this helps to make sure that you know which one is right and which one is left. When we talk about left or right at any point on our robot, we're considering left and right of the robot itself. So pretend you are the robot and this would be the robot's right side or the robot's left side. Let's take a closer look at your motor terminals. These are your motor terminals back here. This is where we're going to plug the speed controller into. You'll see that towards the outside, the motor terminal has a little rib towards the outside. We're going to use that to line up the motor connectors. You saw before that each motor connector has a split side and a solid side. We're going to start by connecting the left motor first. You'll notice that by one of the motor terminals, there's a red dot. That's important because it tells us the polarity of the motor. This shows us which way to plug in the speed controller so that the motor spins the right way. So since this is the left side of the robot, we're going to go ahead and plug the purple wire of our speed controller into the terminal that's by the red dot. We'll end up doing the opposite on the other side later. If you don't do this step correctly, what's going to happen is that when you go forward on the stick, your robot's not going to go forward. It's either going to turn in a circle or it's going to go backwards. So it's easy to change later if we don't get it right but we'll try to get it right to save that step later on. Take the purple wire from your speed controller and we're gonna connect it onto the terminal by the red dot. We're gonna go ahead and line it up with a motor terminal. Make sure that the split side of the connector is towards the outside of the motor. That's gonna make it connect as well as possible. I'm gonna give it a gentle push, making sure to hold it close to the terminal. We don't wanna hold it back here and push. You wanna hold really close to the terminal. And you're gonna feel a little snap when it goes in. Now we give it a gentle tug and you can see it's right in place and it's connected well. Um, if you're building this at home, sometimes when you push the connector on, um, if it's not perfectly straight going in, it might actually bend the connector a little bit. Don't worry, it's fine. You could take little pliers or just use your hands to bend it back and you should be able to press it on. Now let's do the same thing with the other side. Now we're going to use the blue wire. So let's make sure to align the split side of the connector towards the outside of the motor. And just align it with the terminal, slide it right over. Give it a little push and you can hear that little click and now it's nice and tug. 
and that's it. Your left side motor is connected. So let's put it back in the left side so we keep track of it. It's okay if you need to slightly bend these wires a little bit to get it to fit in your robot. All right, perfect. So now you have the first motor installed. So when we put the second motor in, we have to be a little bit careful about orientation. So if you actually look at this motor, you see there's a red dot on one side. So take a look at that one and you'll see the same thing. So if the motor is spinning, let's say it's spinning in this direction, and you put it over here, now the motor is actually spinning in the opposite direction because you changed sides. So when we wire these up, we're going to be careful to wire one opposite the other one so that when you go forward, the whole robot goes forward. So I'll, show, I'll give you a quick demo so you can see how that works. So this is our 9-volt battery, just like we've been using. I'm going to apply power to it. So you can see there it's spinning clockwise. So now if I reverse the two wires, you can see it spins counterclockwise. So that's going to be important because when we put the motors on the robot, we want to make sure that one's going clockwise and one's going counterclockwise. So we have to reverse one or the other. So the speed controller is actually giving the battery voltage to it. So we'll reverse those wires and it'll have the same effect as we just saw here. I'm going to take the speed controller the second speed controller, I'm going to pull the wires apart a little bit. And then I'm going to take the side with the red dot again. But this time, we're going to plug in the blue wire to the side with the red dot. So I'm going to make sure that the split side is towards the outside of the motor. Line it. Give it a little push. And it's on there. All right, just one more connection left. Let's do the purple wire on this last terminal. Again, making sure that it's oriented the correct way. All right, give it a slight tug. That looks good to go. Move this one out of the way and we can place this one in this clamp. All right, the motor side of your speed controllers is all ready to use.